Good day, viewers. Welcome to the Tuesday topic of the week for August 22nd, 2023. Today, we're going to talk about how in the new economy, people earning anywhere from a hundred thousand dollars per year to millions of dollars per year claim now that they're just getting by living paycheck to paycheck and struggling financially just like the rest of us working class low lives who earn less than $75,000 per year, such as yours truly. And why is this happening? Well, it's a multifold type of thing. Now, just for a little bit of background concerning me, I grew up in a low-income housing project during the 1990s. I've mentioned this before in other videos. Yes, I did. And during the 1990s, the early 2000s, even as recently as a decade ago, things were nowhere near as insanely, outrageously expensive as they are in 2023. Not even close. But during the late 1990s, early 2000s, the minimum wage was about 550 or so per hour in the state that I grew up in. Now, even during that time period, you wouldn't have been able to buy a whole lot making five dollars and twenty-five five fifty an hour but during my early twenties I held a job where I was earning eight fifty an hour I believe eight fifty an hour and was able to afford a studio apartment on that salary. $400 a month studio apartment earning $8 an hour. And no, I wasn't living like royalty or anything like that, but I had a little studio apartment in Tacoma on that wage. Fast forward a couple of decades and your average studio apartment costs around twelve hundred dollars a month and that's at the low end anywhere from that to about eighteen hundred dollars a month in just two years time the cost of housing in some parts of the country has risen as much as thirty percent in two years time way higher than the normal rise, the normal yearly rise of inflation, as much as 10 times higher than the normal yearly rise of inflation, which I think is around 3-4% annually. And uh, since December of 2022, there's been a 10% rise in income earners earning over $100,000 a year who say they're struggling to make ends meet from 42 to 52 approximately percent in less than a year. Let that sink in. Eight months ago, 42% of high income earners earning over $100,000 a year claimed that they were having trouble making ends meet. Eight months later, that percentage has risen to 51, 52%.
we're talking about not even a year. Okay, so student debt is a biggie. Now, in order to achieve this high earning American dream, as it is commonly known, for a lot of people, it requires going several hundred thousand dollars into student loan debt because American culture and American society are built around debt. We buy cars with debt. We go into massive debt to buy a house that we, not me personally, but a lot of people have gone hundreds of thousands of dollars into debt to buy a house they couldn't afford to buy. Tens of thousands of dollars into debt for a car. Now, yes, I will admit that about six years ago, I made the mistake of going into debt to purchase a used Toyota. And it took me a few years to pay it off, but I did. And... Uh, The cost of gas in my state has risen over $2 a gallon in a couple of years. The cost of a loaf of bread has doubled. And uh, so you have the insanely high costs of being a homeowner. I hear that fewer people now than ever before want to become home homeowners because the costs of that are so outrageous and yes, they are. The high costs of health care, the costs of child care, student debt, the rising cost of used vehicles, the rising cost of gas to put in those vehicles, the rapidly rising cost of food, all of that combined might explain why people are struggling to make ends meet and having a difficult time saving money even on these high salaries. Now, if you're a hardcore capitalist, you might argue, yeah, so what? It's not the 1990s or the early 2000s anymore. But I don't see how that matters because the cost of so many things are actually rising faster than the normal costs of inflation, way faster than they should be. And the only way this makes sense to me is if it's all being done by design in order to drive people further into massive debt and make sure that we, the people, own nothing and are happy, which is the catchphrase of Agenda 23, but that's a topic for another day. So we have some examples here of specific people who are spending two and three thousand dollars a month for childcare for their kids. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in health care debt. See if I can find that. Well yeah. And uh,
maybe it's a good time for me to mention that yes I know I've discussed this in previous videos but when I was growing up oftentimes my childhood peers would make fun of and bully me because they thought that I was poor and remember this was during the 1990s and our family lived in a three-bedroom house in a low-income housing project and we had a decently sized yard it's true that we didn't have a lot of money but I would not have considered myself to be that poor but again we live in a society where people are very judgmental and hateful when it comes to money but at the same time it's such a taboo topic that nobody wants to talk about I guess out of fear of being judged for either having too much or not having enough and uh, so to summarize According to this article, which I'll provide a link to, the situation is extremely, extremely dire for low-earning and middle-earning households. Much, much more so, according to them. But... People earning in the high six figures and the millions are having difficulty saving money for a rainy day as well. Again, I feel like this is being done purposefully by design because I don't ever remember a time in my life when people earning such high incomes or having it this difficult now yes due to being bullied when I was a child and a teenager for not having material things there is a part of me that thinks to myself well now they know how it feels to be one of us so maybe they can't mock belittle look down on and sneer at us anymore and uh, bully and be cruel to us and make their uh, judgmental statements along the lines of well if only you had gone to school and gotten a good education if only this if only that if only you've been born to the right parents if only you've been born with white skin you wouldn't be in the situation that you're in and when you see this happening to high income earners now, at least me personally, I do feel somewhat vindicated. I'm not going to lie. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.